Ah, ladies and gentlemen, how's everybody doing, man? Everybody good? It's your boy Jane the Builder back again with another video. All right, so I've been doing this list for a while now, and I wanted to wait toward the end of the season for me to finally bring this out to y'all. So, um, if y'all see the title of this of this video, then you already know what the list is. These are the top 10 HBCU players that could potentially be drafted in the 2022 season. Now, just because I named all 10 of these guys, now, they could all be drafted. Some of them could be drafted. My list is for who I believe would be on an NFL roster by the 2022 NFL season. And I feel confident I feel confident about this list. Um, one of the guys that y'all, you know, that I don't have in the top 10, but I do feel that will be on the list, you know, in terms of the guys that are outside looking in. I do have O.B. Miller uh, getting a look, a linebacker out of Jackson State. I do have uh, a guy named Keyshawn James, who is um, D. Lyman, who plays for Fairbury State. Um, let me see. Um, you know what? Jawan, uh, Jawan Carter, quarterback for Norfolk State. I think hopefully, I think he may get a look. Hopefully, but yeah, this right here is gonna be my top ten list. And if you guys ready for it, you guys could debate who y'all think should be on this list. Uh, y'all could feel free to comment, feel free to like, feel free to dislike. It's up to y'all. But I, I'm here to debate it. And I want to see what y'all think about this. So, number 10, I got Jalen Thinkpin. Safety out of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Uh, in 2019, he had 68 tackles, five tackles for loss, an interception, nine pass, uh, nine pass deflections in the 2019 season. Um, he had 28 tackles, four tackles for loss, a forced fumble, five interceptions, and three pass breakups in the spring season, which they only played in five games. And then this year, he, he missed the first two or three games of this season, and he's still the second leading tackler on his team. Um, do I think he was a preseason All-American? Dude could fly, like, dude is fast. And the dude is an athlete. Like, I've seen a few games in the preseason where this dude was just flying around, man. Like, if, like for him, I think he had two interceptions in one of the games in the in the spring. I forget one of the games, but this dude is a, is a ball hawk. And this dude, he's not scared to come up and hit you. You know, for a dude to be only, like, less than 200 pounds, like, you would think, like, you know, for safety, like, you know, Cam Chancellor, who was probably 215, Ed Reed, who was, you know, who was 210, 205. For this dude to be 190 and don't mind coming up and hitting you, like, that dude is legit. He's fast. He can play in coverage. He can come and stop the run. Like, this dude, very versatile. Um, And I, I don't know if I see him getting drafted, but I do see him, you know, getting, you know, getting a few looks. Especially with him getting invited to the HBCU Legacy Bowl, I think he's gonna really he's gonna really show his skills, and I think a lot of teams are gonna look at him, and hopefully he'll get picked up on the team. All right, so that's number that's number ten. Um, number nine, I got James Houston, linebacker slash DN for Jackson State. Now. He's definitely in the running for SWAC Defensive Player of the Year. Um, he had a decent season or a decent career back in Florida. Um, he he had 103 tackles, 11 and a half tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, and four forced, and four forced fumbles in his three seasons that he was there. Now um, he had a torn ACL. I believe um, before he transferred. So when he came to Jackson State, you know him being a good contributor in Florida, 
I kind of knew he would have a good season. But the, the season he's having, he's definitely, like, I think, I mean, honestly, I think he was snubbed, you know, as one of the candidates. Matter of fact, I think he was the biggest snub in terms of winning, you know, in terms of being one of the candidates for winning the FCS Defensive Player of the Year. Um, this year, he had 18 and a half tackles for loss, 12 and a half sacks, and six forced fumbles in only nine games, eight or nine games. So this dude has been, I think he, I think one game against Tennessee State, I think he had five sacks, four, four or five sacks. Uh, I know with him and Aubrey Miller together, I think, I think just between them two, they had six or seven. So yeah, this dude comes off the edge tremendously fast. I still haven't seen, like, I don't know if they'll use him as a DN or as a linebacker. That, I mean, that I'm not sure. Or he, he can be, you know, a blitzing linebacker. But this dude is definitely strong. He, you know, he's 225, 6'1. Um, he definitely built. Like, him, him and Aubrey Miller together are two vicious linebackers slash DN. So I think, I think James Houston. Would definitely get the look. Now, I don't know if he got invited to the Legacy Bowl because remember, he was in Florida for three years. So, a lot of people really didn't know what type of player JCSU or JSU was getting. So, for him to have the season that he's having now, I think people would have no choice but to give this dude a look. So, he's having a, a tremendous season. And hopefully, he definitely gets picked up. <sighs> Number eight. I got Deshaun Dixon. Defensive lineman slash linebacker for Norfolk State. Um, 2019, he had 61 tackles, seven tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, and seven quarterback hurries in 2019. And he was third team off me at. And this season, he's having, uh, he, he leads the me at, and tackles for loss, where I think he has 10 and a half, and he leads in sacks as well, and I think he has seven. Now, uh, he's been invited, I think he's been invited to the Shrine Bowl this year. I, he's only the second player out of Norfolk State in their history to be invited to the Shrine Bowl. Um, he, I think he's also been invited to the HBC Legacy Bowl as well. But for an HBCU player, because I think there's only three of them, there's only three players, three HBCU players that's been invited to the Shrine Bowl. And that's a huge deal because there are a lot of NFL scouts that be at that at that Shrine Bowl itself. Um it, it, it's the oldest, it's the oldest senior bowl game. Um a lot of you so he's gonna be seeing a lot of seniors, not just from FGS players, but FBS players as well. And this dude can play in coverage. He so he can also come up and and come off the edge and get after the quarterback. You know, and for him to lead the MIAC in tackles in tackles for loss and sacks, this dude definitely applies a lot of pressure. Um I, I only saw them play two or three games, but I know but I've seen this dude play a bunch before. I've seen his highlight film, and he definitely hit fast off the ball. Um, hopefully, he, I mean, I ain't seen him what he is projected to be drafted at. Um, he, they currently don't have him ranked in the top 30. Um, he's definitely more like a, a Von Miller type player. You know, he can definitely, you know, he definitely play in zone coverage, but definitely come off the edge. So, yeah, I have him at number eight. Number seven, I got Jawan Taylor. Uh, safety out of Alcorn State. Um, he had um, at 89 tackles, six and a half tackles for loss, uh, two forced fumbles, two interceptions, uh, and five passes deflected in 2019. He also was the defensive uh, player of the game in the SWAT championship 
Um, played, in, played in the um in the celebration bowl for losing to A and T. Um, he leads. He currently leads his team in tackles and is third in the conference in tackles. Um, this dude is this dude is a hitter. Like this dude is a headhunter. He's not so much of a ball hogging safety, I would say, but this dude don't mind hitting at all. And I and I I don't I don't even think it's due to the defense that, that they play. I think he just he just that fast that he he gets to the ball often. Like this dude is definitely legit. Um this dude I think he's what? I think 5'11", 210 pounds. Um dude is strong. I I definitely see him I don't they, they don't have him projected being drafted anywhere either. But I definitely see can see this dude getting a, a look like a few looks. Uh he's been invited to the HBCU Legacy Bowl as well. So hopefully I think I think that bro he has some competition at safety. Cause there are a few more guys in the secondary that I have on his list. But he definitely has some competition. But I think him and Jalen Thickpin could benefit heavy from this HBCU Legacy Bowl because there are going to be a, a lot of a lot of scouts out there looking as well. Um, I don't know if he got invited to the Shrine Bowl at all, but he but I did see that he got invited to the Legacy Bowl. So I, hopefully that would help him. Um, yeah, so I got him at number seven. Number six, I got Keontae Hampton, linebacker out of Jackson State. Um, 2019, he had a hundred. He he won the SWAC Defensive Player of the Year with 106 tackles, had 13 tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, and this year, I think this year, he's got he got lost in the fold. Well, they, I think. With the amount of talent that came to Jackson State, this dude still remained himself. Like this dude continued to make plays, and I think he's he's third on the team in tackles. And I think with all the talk with with you know with Shallow, his Shador, and Aubrey Miller and James Houston and the offensive weapons, people really don't mention Keontae. And this dude has been the most consistent, not just for Jackson State, but he's been the most consistent in the SWAC period. And he's been preseason first team all conference the last three in the last three seasons. Uh, I think he he was top five in tackles during the spring season. And this dude is a tackling machine. And I think they used him often um, to cover the linebackers because the defense that they run, they run a four-two-five. So they, so they, so they already, so they always have five DBs on the field at one time, all the time. So it's just him and Aubrey Miller in the middle. And so Coach Prime relies on those two guys to to play sideline to sideline and they do a damn good job at it. Especially Keontae. Like I really love his motor. Um he's 225 pounds, 6'1, and def and he this dude is is definitely a headhunter. I really like the way he gets after it. Um I didn't really see too many scouts say anything about him. I didn't look up I didn't see anything on him. But this dude definitely needs to get a few looks. Definitely. Um, I do that. I didn't see that he got invited to the to the Legacy Bowl just yet, but I'm pretty sure he he he's going to. Like he's been too much of a contributor to JSU for him not to get a look. So yeah, I, I have I have Keontae at number six. Mmm, the nitty gritty now. Okay. The top five. At number five, I got I got Jeterry Carter. 
I'm I'm sorry if I'm butchering his name, but Jet Jet Jetari. I think that's his name. I have Jetari Carter, the offensive tackle for Southern. Do um I've seen he's uh he's currently the number 27th offensive tackle on the draft board. He's projected to be drafted anywhere between the fifth and seventh round. Um, this dude, I don't know. I, I hope I, I could find some highlights of him. But I've seen him play versus Parachute. I've seen him play versus uh, Alcorn. I've seen him versus Arkansas Pine Bluff. Um, this dude can get to the second level pretty quickly. Uh, the dude is definitely athletic. It's hell. Um, he's quick on his feet. I didn't. I, I don't. I, I really don't see him. Or don't see him give up a lot of sacks, if any. Um, he is always moving forward. This guy is always moving forward. Now I don't know. Now I don't think he got invited to the Shrine Bowl, but he did get invited to the Legacy Bowl. And I think with with a bunch of these guys. Who's getting invited into this bowl? Cause I think this this is very brand new. Like this is gonna be the first time that it's happening. So I really think it is gonna benefit everybody who has been invited. Now, with all these guys, with the rest of these guys that are on this list, they they all been invited. But I think with uh with Carter, I'm calling him Mr. Carter. With Mr. Carter, man, um, this dude. Look, he plays on a team. He he's the anchor of the offensive line, who's number one in rushing. Like they're number one in rushing, and uh, and some of it does have to do with their running back, but a lot of it has to do with their offensive line. And he plays on the left side, so this dude is definitely strong, and he gets upfield quickly. And you know, for him to end, I think he started off. Number 26, I, I believe so. And he's he's currently uh, 27th, and I think he's definitely going to be drafted on, I think, the second or third day. He definitely has a good chance, so hopefully he can show off in his Legacy Bowl, and hopefully it can raise his stock up. Um, So I have him at number five. Number four, a lot of y'all are not going to know this kid. I have Joshua Williams, cornerback for Fairville State. Now, this kid is very unique. He's uh, the number 32 ranked corner back on the draft board. He's projected to be drafted between the sixth and seventh round. Uh, he of uh, 2019, he had 32 tackles. Uh, Three tackles for loss, two interceptions, and eleven pass deflections. Um, he got um he's he made the first team all conference this year. He's the only look, check this out, y'all. He's the only division two defensive player to be on the to be projected to be drafted. Now I don't know if I if I said that kind of weird, so I'm gonna say it again. He's the only division two defensive player that is projected to be drafted the only one and i don't know if if, if a lot of y'all played football before but playing corner like this dude like this guy is 6'3 6'3 200 pounds for a 6'3 corner 6'2 6'3 corner for him to be that tall in the play corner that tells a lot about how good hips that you have. Pause, if needed. But this dude can, this dude is definitely fast. He can play man-to-man -man coverage. He can play press. He can play off. He can also come up and hit. I've seen him play uh, corner and safety, but his main his main position is corner. Um, the first time i seen this kid play was in the 2019 CIAA Championship game. And he's been a very heavy contributor of this team since 2018. And he and 
he had a very very strong two uh two two K eighteen and two K nineteen season for him to be very much looked at into getting drafted. Now there are uh, he he he's also been invited to the Legacy Bowl. Don't know if he's been invited to the Shrine Bowl, but this guy this dude is definitely locked down. This dude is definitely fat. I think he runs a four five and a forty, which is good. Like, cause this kid definitely reminds me of Richard Sherman. Like, for him to be tall, like you tall, you have to have good ball skills if you're tall and playing cornerback at six three. Cause normally with guys that tall, you're playing safety because you're last line of defense, you know, and and you're and you're tall, so you definitely can jump high, but. For you to be 6'3 and playing corner, that tells people a lot about your ball skills. You know what I'm saying? So I think this dude is definitely, hopefully, could definitely have a good, some, a good few seasons in the NFL. And hopefully he gets a chance to show out in the Legacy Bowl. So I have him at number four. At number three. I got Diobi Durant, cornerback out of South Carolina State. Now, uh, the uh, Diobi is the thirty is ranked number thirtieth on the draft board in terms of cornerbacks. Uh, he had thirty five tackles, three interceptions, and twelve pass breakups in two thousand nineteen. Um, he's projected to be drafted anywhere between the second between fourth and the sixth round. Um he was preseason pre uh, preseason second team all American. Um and he pretty much projected to to win the the MIAC defensive player of the year. Um this dude is locked down. Like the way I thought like how I talked about Josh Williams no, this dude right here is a lockdown corner for real. Um, if y'all watch them versus Clemson, he had two interceptions. And sometimes you'd be good, sometimes you'd be lucky, and sometimes you could be both. Like, for you to have two interceptions against one of the top teams in the nation in FBS, that says a lot. Like, that says a whole lot about how good you are as a player. And I think, and he's a smaller guy, but this dude don't mind getting in your face. Like, a lot, a lot of the games that I've seen him play this year, he's always in man coverage. He's always pressed man. Like, this dude is not afraid to get in your face. He's definitely fast, too. He definitely is a ball hog. He, he also had two interceptions versus um Alabama AM, aka Akil Glass. Like he picked up Akil Glass twice. You no, know, so he he leads um he leads the MIAC in interceptions and pass breakups. Uh he matter of fact he led the MIAC in pass breakups the last two seasons. You know, so this dude is definitely legit at corner. And you know he he's been invited to the legacy bowl and hopefully he Gets a chance to stand out, and I hope he gets invited to the NF to the to the NFL Combine. At least I think like I think he's good enough to where he can compete amongst the best of them. Um, I think he runs a a four four for, uh, from the last time I seen. He runs a four four five in the forty. So this dude could definitely play at, at the next level, and I can't wait to see him. <sighs> At number two, I got Akil Glass, quarterback for Alabama A&M. Now, he's been the talk of the town all year. Uh, well, not as much as Jackson State has been, but he definitely had his fair share of games this year to where he was up, where he was down, he was mid or whatever, but he, you know, but he stayed level, level-headed. Like, especially with the game that he had versus TSU. Like, this dude had a field day. He threw for over 400 yards and had five touchdowns. Like, granted, it was against T 
Texas Southern, but he that was that was a barn burn that he had. So that was kudos for him. Um, he ranked up. He's the seventh ranked quarterback on the draft um, amongst the quarterback class that are being drafted. Um, he's projected to go anywhere between the third and fifth round. So in the spring season, so before we get to there, in 2019, he had 3,600 yards passing with 32 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, and had a, a 61 completion percentage rate. Um, in the spring season, he had 1,300 yards, 16 touchdowns, four interceptions, and he won the SWAC championship and was SWAC Offensive Player of the Year. And mind you, that's big for Alabama and what well, that's big for him because Alabama A&M hasn't won the SWAC in 15 years. So for him, so for it's fitting for him to be that guy that led him there. So, um, and then this year he's, he's second. Matter of fact, he leads the conference in passing yardage. Um, and this dude, you know, for, uh, for the most part this season, he's been, he's been fairly decent, but I've said this before, no matter how good or bad he's been doing this year, like, like during the middle of the season, I said that his draft stock wasn't going to go down. And that's only because of the draft, you know, of the quarterback class that he's in. And I think that matters. Now, even though a lot of teams do need quarterback, so I think that was a fair assessment, I, th I thought. Um, I don't know if he's been invited to the Shrine Bowl, but he's been invited to the Legacy Bowl. Um, this dude can make all the throws. Uh, I think the knock on him that people were making of him is that they throw a lot of screen passes and he was throwing to and he throws to like a lot of his receivers are really good like D Anderson and Abdul and, and Ibrahim but I, Ibrahim is is going to be an NFL player soon to come as well but uh yeah Hakeem Glass um makes that offense go now I, you know, for granted, you know, um, I don't know where he'll get drafted. They say he's projected to go between the third and fifth round, but I think he can make all the throws. I think, you know, with a good offensive line, because his offensive line sometimes wasn't there, and I think that's where a lot of the screen passes came from. And... His defense lost him a lot of games as well. I, I can I, I, I can say that. I will say that. So a lot of the losses are not on him because while they're losing, they was they were still scoring points. Now, in terms of that Grandma State game, we ain't gonna talk about that. But yeah, but I got Hakeel Glass at number two. Number one player. The number one best. HBCU player that will potentially be drafted in 2022 NFL draft is Marquise Bell. I have Marquise Bell number one. Um, he's ranked number ranked number 19th amongst safeties. Uh, he's projected to go anywhere between the fourth and sixth round. He had 57 tackles, three and three interceptions. In 2019, his first team all MEAC. Uh, this year, he was a uh, preseason All American, preseason All SWAC already, and they didn't even play a SWAC game. Um, for me, this dude has been the most consistent on defense. Well, one of the most consistent. Um, I can see him getting first team All SWAC. All SWAC. Uh, now, he does play with a player named Isaiah on that defensive line who leads the who leads the nation in sacks. And I think his name, you know, Isaiah's name gets talked about on that defense a lot. But Marquise Bell, man, that dude is a ball hog. That dude is a tackling machine. That dude is everywhere on that defense. 
He leads his team in tackles. He's fourth in the swag in tackles. And, you know, this dude, since, you know, and his story is unique. You know, him transfer, you know, him starting his college career at the University of Maryland, you know, and, you know, and obviously he getting kicked out and him going to Hajuko, then for him to be, to come to Florida a and and to be the man at the gate, you know, and um, I rarely see him make a mistake. Or if he does, he don't make the same mistake twice in the same game. Like, I, I remember um, his sophomore year, um, he was, he was I, it was a play where he was the deep safety. And me, you know, me playing a defensive back, I, I noticed it. So he didn't backpedal had started to play. He kind of stood still. And I think they were playing man coverage. So one of, so the wide receiver on the left side ran like a goal route or like a, a or like a a skinny post damn near and and the ball went over in his head for a touchdown. And in that same game, they did the same play. And this time he backpedaled at the start of the play. They threw that same ball and he almost picked it off. You know, so I think this dude learns from his mistakes on the fly. And this guy is, is I believe, honestly, could be, you know, could be a very good safety in the NFL. Like, I think this dude could be a very good contributor out the gate on any team because he can play anywhere, honestly. Like, this dude, like, I think that dude is that legit. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I think, I think, I think he, he's he been invited to the Shrine Bowl this year. I don't know if he's going to do the Legacy Bowl, but for him to be invited to the Shrine Bowl, with him, as a matter of fact, him being one of the two or three HBCU players to be invited to the Shrine Bowl, I think that is huge. That is extremely huge, you know. So, I think he gonna show out. I think he, I, I think he's gonna be a very heavy contributor, and I think we can. And to be honest with you, I think if he impresses, then he could probably raise his stock up. I think he could be drafted in the third round. To be honest, to be honest with you, like I think he's that good. So hopefully, you know, they could look at Marcus and Marquise and just see the talent that this kid has, man, because this dude is amazing. He flies, he flies around every time I see him. So yeah, man, I, I think this dude is definitely one of the most consistent players that's been in the swag this year. So hopefully, you know, the NFL can see what they have in this kid, man, and he can be drafted pretty high. But yeah, man, that's my list. Let me know what y'all think about it. Let me know how y'all feel. Y'all can feel to agree or disagree. I love a good debate. So y'all can let me know. Um, that has my time, man. Hope you guys, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment and share, man. I appreciate the love, man. I definitely appreciate y'all. Peace.